Hey guys, Jason here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about the book club. Uh, we read Don't Fear the Reaper by Stephen Graham Jones in March. It is now April. We will discuss that uh, presently. Before that, though, um, just a reminder, we are reading the conclusion to the, the Indian Lake trilogy, um, The Angel of Indian Lake, in the month of April. I have not yet started the book, um, but I do have it on my Kindle, so I am ready to go. And I am excited to see how it all wraps up. I've been looking at what are we going to do uh, in the coming months after we finish um, the Stephen Graham Jones trilogy. I've been looking at things that are coming out soon. We've got a Stephen King book coming out in May. Uh, so I think we will probably read that one in June. It's a short story collection, and um, we haven't done one of those. I've never actually, I don't think I've ever reviewed a Stephen King novel. That'll be June. For May, what I kind of want to do is read um, Christopher Buhlman's The Black Tongue Thief. I read Between Two Fires last year, and it was like my favorite book. Um, so I want to read more Buhlman. I know this isn't strictly horror per se. We'll say it's more of like a dark fantasy, which is fine by me. And that'll set us up perfectly to read the prequel, sequel, whatever, that's coming out in June. It's called The Daughter's War, I believe. So that's the plan as it is right now. May will read The Black Tongue Thief. June will read the new Stephen King short story collection. And then um, in July, we will read The Daughter's War. Okay, great. Another small tidbit, but um, our special guest, Nymeria the Cat, will no longer uh, be making any appearances. We had to put her down this week. So unfortunately, she will not be joining me in my videos any longer. And it's really sad, but um, me and the wife are talking about maybe getting another cat. So anyway, we might have a new furry friend, um, here pretty soon. Anyway, without further ado, let's get down to business here. Don't Fear the Reaper by Stephen Graham Jones. Uh, this is a sequel to My Heart is a Chainsaw. Came out, uh, 2022, I think. We'll do some spoiler-free, kind of just high-level talking about the book. Basically, the story takes place four-ish years after the events of um, My Heart is a Chainsaw. Jade, uh, she goes by Jennifer now. She's now no longer Jade. She's serious. She doesn't think about horror all the time. She has some legal trouble, or has been having some legal trouble for the last four years. There's a video out there of her killing her father with a machete on the night of the big massacre from the first book. So she's been dealing with that. She is just out of jail, I guess, and she's headed back to Proofrock. Currently in Proofrock, they are experiencing one of the, uh, it's like a storm of the century type of massive blizzard. It's very cold, lots of snow, blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, there is a serial killer by the name of Dark Milled South who is being transported, prison transported. He escapes. And he is in proof rock. So then people start to die. Teenage kids. These teenage killings, they appear to be uh, mimicking um, murders from certain slasher films. It's kind of that. It's uh, everyone, everyone assumes it's Dark Mill South that's doing the killing, but perhaps not. Perhaps it is some other uh, slashery, killery person. Perhaps Stacey Graves is back for vengeance. Perhaps um, any number of other... Uh, things could be going on. Because Proofrock has a deep history of, of, of uh, murder. I will say I enjoyed this book uh, quite a bit more than the first one. I still say it's, 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 a, it's a middle. It's, a, it's not like my favorite book ever, but it's pretty good. I think I liked it more mainly because um, it's not all 100% from Jade's perspective. There's like other point of view characters, so you get to see a lot of like other characters Specifically, Letha, or Letha, whatever, her husband, Banner Tompkins, um, he's like the sheriff now. You get Hardy, who was the, um, I think he was the sheriff in the first one, and he was, uh, had his guts spilled out. He survived. A lot of characters from the from the first book come back, make a, make a reappearance, um, which is typical of a, of a slasher sequel. This pretty much follows most of the slasher sequel rules, right? Higher body count, bloodier, whatever. I also think uh, it was it was very referential. Don't get me wrong, but I feel like it was less 
referential than the first book. Like, a lot of things that happened that referenced other, uh, like, canonical sort of slasher films, but it wasn't a constant barrage of, like, her, of Jade's, like, inner monologue referencing different movies and obscure things. So there was less of that, too, which in the first book got a little grating. So I think those are the reasons why I enjoyed this a little more. I'm going to call this uh, the start of the spoilery section. If you haven't read the book yet, uh, go read it. And obviously, I've already spoiled the first book quite a bit. So there are a number of murders that happen in this book that are based on movies. And the first one uh, is Scream. So Steve and um, whatever, what's her name? The... Uh, Drew Barrymore's character in Scream. They die, Steve gets his guts ripped out, and uh, Drew Barrymore gets um, murdered and gutted and hung from a tree. And that happens in the very, very beginning of this book. Um, which, uh, I, right away, I was like, that's Scream, oh my god. So, um, yeah, I knew right away that this was going to be like, there's like a copycat type of a killer or some sort of thing. And you could kind of tell, too, just from, like, looking at the table of contents, the chapters, each chapter, I guess it's kind of every other chapter, they, he does this epistolary thing that he did in the first one, where there's, like, a chapter of the main story, and then there's a chapter of, like, a book report that someone wrote. It's similar to what happened in the first book. The chapters that are not the epistolary chapters are named after famous slasher movies. So you've got, you know, Scream... And you've got your Friday the 13th. So during those chapters, the, the killings that happen are kind of uh, an homage to those those particular films. So Scream's the first one. Then, you know, a bunch of stuff happens. Jade comes back to the, to the town and meets up with Hardy. And he's all, you know, whatever. And it's snowing real hard. And they, they find out about Dark Mill South. And they assume, like, oh, he's on the loose. Jade now, by, now goes by Jennifer. Because she's been away for four years. So she's trying to kind of shed that identity of what she, who she used to be when she was there but it becomes very hard for her um because everyone sees her as jade and they even call her jade even though she corrects them and says no i'm jennifer now for her coming back to proof rock it's just very hard to escape kind of people's perceptions of her and the irony is now everyone else not everyone else but a number of other people have kind of taken over the role of being like the obsessed slasher people like letha mondragon is now fulfilling that role of the person who's like constantly thinking about slashers and, and it's like it's the way that she deals with the trauma from the um the first book is now in, like she kind of ignored it in the first book and was like oh that's silly whatever she kind of just like brushed it off but now that she's been through that she is kind of obsessed with knowing everything she's though their roles have kind of swapped in that way and that's i thought that was really interesting there's a couple other characters um that also do that she's got like a, a disfigured jaw she's got a kid now she's married to banner Tompkins, who's like the new sheriff or whatever he's she so her jaw is so messed up she's had so many surgeries and stuff it's kind of wired shut she's on like a liquid diet and she's addicted to opiates but yeah, two of the characters that kind of come back are Cinnamon and Ginger Baker, who um, I kind of forgot who they were from the first book, but they were the two twins that were on the yacht um, that kind of saw uh, Jade when she cut her hair. So one of those um, girls was able to escape the yacht, and one of them didn't. And was left there and kind of and like was deeply traumatized by it ended up uh, eventually getting off of the yacht and living for however many days by herself in the woods and so she kind of had a mental break and she's in a mental institution ginger so much of the plot kind of centers around cinnamon Jade is, or Jennifer is kind of convinced that Cinnamon is the final girl this time around. Um, Ginger is her uh, sister that, you know, is 
one of the characters that's sort of obsessive over horror movies and stuff. This all takes place over just like a couple of days um, during this crazy blizzard. And like I said, everyone assumes that there's this Dark Mill South character. He's it is is the one responsible for the killings. He's a serial killer. He's in the area. They know that. And so it's a, a, some, a easy assumption to make, right? And he is, sort of. It all culminates into this big thing, this big final thing where he's this big hulking guy who, going through town, killing people and stuff. And the, the final girl, Cinnamon Baker, has to confront him. It turns out that, like, Jade is the one that ends up kind of fulfilling that role of final girl. She's the one that ultimately ends up killing Dark Mill South and discovering the truth that Cinnamon and Ginger well, Cinnamon, I guess, had this kind of elaborate plot to impersonate her sister. It was kind of confusing a little bit. I was kind of confused by exactly what happened because Cinnamon shaved her head to look like Ginger but then put a wig on to pretend to be Ginger, pretending to be Cinnamon. It got very confusing but i think at the end of the day ginger gets killed she gets a screwdriver through the neck and cinnamon is the one who's been doing the the copycat killings this whole time and her plan was to place the blame on dark mill south because uh because it was convenient so that he happened to be around um I think she was maybe going to put the blame on Jade originally, but with Dark Mill South being in town, uh, it was just a serendipitous sort of thing that she was able to um, kind of divert attention away from herself. Stephen Graham Jones. I appreciate what he does, and I, I think he's a, he's a very good writer. I feel like there's something that I'm not getting when I'm reading his books. Like, I'm getting the, like, gist of it, but I feel like he's saying a lot more than... I, maybe I'm just too dumb to, like, understand what's happening, but I don't know. I just feel like I'm missing something. This is the third book of his that I've read, and I kind of always feel like that. Like, I always feel like I need to read it again. Maybe he's just not for me. I am going to, obviously, I'm going to finish the this, this series, but I don't know. I might, I might, might not read, read him anymore. Yeah, so anyway, that's kind of pretty much all I have to say. Um, it was, uh, it was pretty good. Please let me know what you guys thought in the comments. If you agree, disagree, have anything else to say. So yeah, that's it. Happy reading. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.